change your past to change your future. That's what I'm talking about in this episode. And the good news is that with timeline therapy, you can, in fact, change your past. Now, that might seem kind of crazy, but I'm going to explain to you just exactly how you can, in fact, change your past. I've done it myself. I've helped other people do this. And as a result, myself and many of my clients and students have created a very different future for themselves. So first of all, let me take you back, take you way back to before 2015. Now, if you've listened to some of my other episodes, uh, you will know that I have done a lot of work on myself and the reason I'm so passionate about coaching and teaching people how to coach and teaching coaching communication skills and NLP and timeline therapy very much started with the profound effect that it had on my own life personally and my desire to be a really positive role model for my daughter and then beyond that to really make a positive impact on the world and the ripple effect that that gets sent out. So Way back before 2015, before 2016, there was a time when I had loads of fear. Loads of fear. Mostly it was fear of people. I I didn't necessarily have phobias. I did have a bit of a spider phobia that my mum passed down to me, um, which I've mostly sorted out. Um, But most of my fear was really around people. So people and relating to people. So I had loads of fears around rejection, fears of abandonment, Uh, that someone was going to get me. That was a really interesting one. I had this fear for many, many years that someone was going to get me and uh, I'll talk about that a bit uh, later in this episode as well. Uh, I had fears that I didn't fit in, that I didn't belong. I had loads of social anxiety, which I used to manage with alcohol. Uh, I used to love going out and having a drink and gaining some um, confidence through alcohol and releasing inhibitions not something I uh, uh, advocate did I say that right advocate I don't I recommend and I had an extreme fear of public speaking and I was just talking about public speaking in the coaching circle insiders actually just this morning uh, which is the subscription coaching and, and business uh, coaching program that I have that come off the back of this podcast Uh, where I do weekly training and I was just talking about public speaking this morning in there. Uh, But my fear of public speaking was so bad I would get red and shaky uh, and just accepting an award in front of my workmates in my old workplace when I used to work in a function Uh, centre. It was terrible. I would just feel so uncomfortable and my voice would shake. I'd go red. My legs would be shaking. I'd swear everyone could see my legs were shaking. I didn't want to hold a piece of paper because I knew people would be able to see that I was shaking. It was it was in, intense. And I had fears of asking for money. I, ha- I had fears of doing sales. In fact, I left a job in the banking industry because I had sales targets and I hated it. I hated asking people, like I hated doing sales. I had fears of being in front of the camera when I first, uh, first got into business. I remember doing this 90-day video challenge. I was pet- Petrified of being in front of the camera. I had imposter syndrome. I feared that I'd say the wrong thing. I feared that people wouldn't like me. Uh, you know, I could go on, but I think you get the picture. And uh, you most likely can relate to some of these, okay, because these aren't things that are uncommon. People have all types of fears and worries and doubts and, uh, you know, all kinds of negative emotions. Now, I have released pretty much all of these fears especially the ones around speaking, being on camera, (laughs) you know, sales, all those things, luckily. Um, You know, I can't say that they don't ever sneak up sometimes because not like how they did before, but if I – because I'm always setting myself new challenges and growth. So if I was to do public speaking, if someone said, oh, Tony, can you speak to like 10,000 people, no doubt there would be some – I would have to work through there because it's beyond the scope of where I've had to put myself before or work on okay so that can happen as you grow like there's different levels of you know where you you need to do work because there's different perceived threats 
essentially to us as humans. But I know how to deal with those things. I could deal with those things if I was put in that perspective, in that position. But the fact is now I do loads of speaking. I speak in front of networking groups every week. I do this podcast. I do video. I speak to other groups, speak at conferences, you know, global trainings, um, all kinds of things. So I really did actually get over those those fears. And so as a result, I've been able to release a lot of those fears. I've been able to create really healthy relationships with those really close to me, including my partner, my daughter. Um, I've been, like I said, speaking and standing up in front of training rooms with global audiences for like days on end for the last eight years. I've created a six-figure business, recorded you know hundreds of videos, including live videos. I've done like 30, 90 days consecutive live videos um and the podcast is now up to i think this is about episode 28 we've had over a thousand downloads which i'm very excited about because that beats about 87 percent of podcasters that quit after 13 episodes that's very interesting isn't it uh so all of these things the reason why i'm telling you these things is because all of these achievements seemed completely impossible for me before i come across timeline therapy and learned how my brain created these fears and how I could release them and do it very, very quickly. And timeline therapy has hands down been the most powerful technique that I've used for myself and I've now been using it with my clients and I teach this to people. I've been doing it for the last eight years and I work a lot with female coaches and practitioners And a lot of their major blockers are things like mum guilt, so feeling very guilty about running a business and not being there all the time for their children. Um, They have a lot of money blocks, just like I did, around asking for money or earning money or their prices, all those kinds of things, and lots of fears of visibility when it comes to being the face of your business or public speaking or doing live video or having your photo taken, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. It comes up time and time and time again. And I work with people and help them release this kind of stuff all the time. I also work with men. I've worked with a lot of men, help them get uh, rid of anxiety and depression, um, anger, uh, shame. I said guilt's one that comes up quite a lot as well. Sadness. A lot of these things, I've helped people, like I said, the last eight years, help them to get rid of those negative emotions. And timeline therapy is exactly what I've done to help them. And I'm going to talk about exactly what is timeline therapy and how does it work. And I'm going to go through this in a lot of detail. So if you need to re-listen to any of this, please do. This is a quick and important message to let you know the Coaching Circle podcast is proudly sponsored by Tony Everard Coaching, your go-to coaching, communication and business mindset specialist and NLP master trainer. Are you ready for an identity shift to break through to the next level in your life and business? I'm here to help you tap into your inner power so you can fulfill your grand life purpose. Book a personalized one-to-one strategy call with me to supercharge your business mindset, coaching and communication skills. Let's work together to elevate your success and amplify your impact. Head to the link in the show notes to schedule your strategy call today. So timeline therapy. Let's go back to the very start. And timeline therapy was created in the 1980s by Dr. Tad James, who was one of my uh, trainers and mentors back in 2016. And uh, Tad James was very highly trained in NLP. He was very close to the creators of NLP. And uh, he was one of the most studied Uh, people I've come across in hypnosis. He had the biggest collection of uh, hypnosis books. He was very much into NLP and hypnosis and he created timeline therapy. Now, the concept of your timeline, that in itself isn't new. That's been around since ancient Greek times and your timeline is essentially how your mind stores all of your memories in an order, in a chronological order essentially with so that you know the difference between now and what happened a week ago, three months ago, six months ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, and what's going to happen in the future, next week, three months' time, next Christmas, 10 years' time, okay? You have a timeline. 
and all your memories are stored on that timeline. And timeline therapy works on the premise that essentially all of our memories in the past should be emotionally positive or neutral. And if they're not, it just means that we haven't learned what we're meant to learn from them. Okay, so if you think about a memory in the past, you know, a memory of anything that happened, it could be a really great memory or it could be a really negative memory, okay, a bad memory about something, and you think about what's in that memory, there will likely be some kind of picture or movie that plays in your mind. There might be some sounds. There might be some things that you hear people that they said or there was music playing or that there was some other kind of sound that was relevant. And there will be some kind of emotions attached to that memory. Okay, so thinking about that memory, if it was a really happy time, thinking about that memory can create feelings of happiness within you right now. Okay, we can all think about times in the past when we had a really great time and we loved it and there was a lot of positive emotions and thinking about that can create that positive emotion in your uh, body again. Well, the same happens with uh, events that have negative emotions. So if you can think about something bad that happened, uh, maybe you lost something or someone or, um, you know, whatever happened, something happened in childhood, things didn't go how you wanted to, um, you know, maybe some kids picked on you or someone said something or whatever happened. Maybe your parents separated or, you know, all kinds of things can happen, right? It's life. But if you think about those events and you remember that you felt angry or you felt sad or you felt fearful or guilty or shame or, um, you know, anything else that, might be attached to that if you think about that long enough you'll feel those emotions in your body and that means that that event hasn't been fully processed in a way for you to learn what you needed to learn from that event and to then let those emotions go and so to think about this we have to come from the premise that essentially life is happening for you not to you Okay, now this is something that sometimes takes a bit to get your head around because you think, well, how could something bad happen to me, happening to me ever be for me? Well, if you are still alive now, then it didn't kill you and there was a purpose for it happening in your life and you can either choose to find those learnings, which could be learnings about your own strength, your own character, you know, how important it is for you to stand up for yourself, um, understanding other people in relation to yourself. There could be a whole range of learnings. It could be that you learned the importance of integrity. It could be that you learned the importance of trusting your gut. It could be that you learned that you are actually, you know, a good person, that that event um, didn't happen because there was something wrong with you like you thought at the time. But in fact, it was about the other person There could be a whole range of learnings that you can get or you have the opportunity to get from that event. And the problem is is that you can only hold on to the negative emotions or get the learnings. You can't do both. So you have to be prepared to let the negative emotions go. And sometimes people are more than willing to let go of negative emotions Sometimes people feel justified in holding on to negative emotions, okay? Or people are told that there's no way that they'll get over that thing. Okay, have you ever heard that? People say, oh my God, those poor children, that's happened to them, they'll never get over this. That's one of the worst things that you could ever say to someone. Okay, people can move on and get over anything that they want to. They can release negative emotions. Anything that's happened to you in your past is not meant to be a life sentence, Okay, and this can be different cultures, have different ideas about this. Um, you know, often I do a lot of coaching with people who have had people pass and there's culturally, there's part of them that thinks that they have to be sad to honour that person. You don't have to be sad to honour a person. You can honour a person in a much more positive way. And in fact, if you ask the person who passed if they want you to be sad about them for the rest of your life, I guarantee you they'd say no. They would much rather you think about them with love and joy or everything that they brought to your life, then focus on the loss of them not being there anymore. So there's lots of ways we can think about this. um, But essentially, the important thing is to know that holding on to negative emotions 
doesn't only stop you from learning what you need to, to learn, but it's actually not good for your body. Okay, so your memories are stored in your unconscious mind, which is the domain of the body. And so when you're holding on to a lot of uh, emotions from the past, whether they're anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, shame, or anything else like that, um, that energy, because emotions are energy in motion, that energy will have a negative impact on your body as well as the experience of life that you have now and into the future. So for an example of this is if you have a lot of fear from the past, for whatever reason, whatever's happened, and there's a lot of fear attached to those memories, what will happen is that you will project that fear onto the future. And when I say project, I mean those feelings of fear form a filter through which you perceive reality. Okay, they form a filter for which you look at the world and it will be tinted with fear. So you will see fear a lot more if you've got a lot of unresolved fear in your past. And when you perceive fear, if you see fear in your future, that creates anxiety and stress. Okay, it's not good for you. It's not good for you. So being able to release that fear from the past will stop you from seeing the world through a filter of fear and you will stop creating anxiety and stress for yourself. Uh, sadness. Sadness that's held on to from the past can very much lead to depression and lowered immune system. Anger held on to from the past can um, affect the heart. There's loads of uh, studies and books that you can read about the negative effects of uh, on the body from holding on to negative emotions. So if you look at the work of Louise Hay, Deepak Chopra, um, you know, even if you go into some of the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, um, there's loads and loads and loads of information about it that holding on to negative emotions in the unconscious mind, in the body, is detrimental for the body. Okay, it's detrimental for health and uh, it will also give you a lower experience of your current reality. Okay, so you know, and that's really one thing that's important to know because often people think, well, you know, whatever's happened in the past, it's in the past. And long as I've got it packed away tightly enough, it's not affecting me now. Well, that's not entirely true. Okay, your unconscious mind is putting a lot of energy to keep it repressed in your past, but it will be affecting you somehow in some form in your current life and in your future life. Um, but like I said, it's a choice. It's a choice that you make about whether, you know, you want to um, do the work and release those things from the past or if you want to hold them in your body. So holding these negative emotions in your body doesn't just have a, ne a negative effect on your health and happiness, but it also prevents you from learning the lessons, the wisdom or the truth about you as a person. Okay? It's disempowering to be a victim to the past and let it affect your present and future because if you're unwilling to let go of negative emotions and I... Right now, you might not know how to, but I'm going to talk about this and how we do it in timeline therapy. Um, if you're not willing to let go of negative emotion from the past, you're essentially stunting your own personal growth because you can't grow while holding on to a negative emotion because a negative emotion says that something happened that is uh, out of alignment with me and I can't do anything to change it. And that's not the truth of who you are. You are a magnificent being who is here to experience and learn and grow and sometimes there'll be challenges and sometimes there'll be negative emotions that you experience but they're not for you to be held on to they're to be processed they're to be learned from they're to be released so that you can raise your energy and your vibration and you can like i said grow learn evolve gather more wisdom and create more of what you want to happen in your life. And when we talk about patterns, cycles of things happening over and over and over again, that comes from people refusing to find the lesson. So the thing is, when you see patterns in your life, like maybe um, you get into the same type of relationships and they go bad, and then you get out of that one and you get in another one. I, I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> no judgment. Um, it's because there's lessons that you need to learn. Okay, if... You, it could happen in the workplace. Maybe you get a, t a certain type of boss or a certain type of client who gives you a hard time. 
and you just get into victim mode and say it's all about them and never learn the lesson, you'll keep getting that same pattern back. Okay, so it's really important. These things are happening again. Life is happening for you, not to you. And as much as often people want to be able to blame others for how they treat them or how they feel, if you want to be stuck in that pers- uh, from that perspective, you're robbing yourself of your own empowerment to create a different reality for yourself. Because the truth is, you can't you can't control anyone else. You can't change what anyone else does. You can only control or change yourself. And how you respond, how you react, what you allow, how you think, how you perceive things, what you decide things mean, and, you know, how much you work on yourself, okay? And I know that since I have, uh, and, and I could have come up with all the reasons in the world, and I know my clients are the same, people have things that happen to them. You know, I had my parents divorced when I was very young, um, you know, my, both my parents have been remarried several times, we moved house a lot of times. You know, we had a split family. There was, all, there was all kinds of different issues and things that went on. I could say, well, I'm a victim of that, right? I could, it could sound true because that's what happened and it could very much explain how I created all these fears for myself but I don't have any control over that situation and if I want to blame it, I have to keep that situation, if I want to change it, I have to go, okay, yep, I can see how all that happened but it's my responsibility to change it and I want to create a different reality so I want to stop having the past have any kind of hold over me. Okay, so it's a really important thing to do. So when we look at these problems and these negative emotions, more often than not, the root cause of these problems, so where they actually started, are uh, when you are seven years old or younger. So when you're very young and so this is really key, okay, because when you're very young, you don't have the ability to critically analyse a situation, okay, you think about a child that's one, two, three, four, five, six, if something happens, they don't have the neurology to critically analyse people's behaviour, the world, any other thing to make anything rational, okay, something happens, someone's upset, they get upset, okay, and create meaning. What does that mean about them? Okay, young children, very everything is about me. They can't, they can't critically separate themselves from, from anyone else or anything else. And so if something happens and it's traumatising in some way or there's some negative emotion or some kind of limitation that is imposed upon the child in their thinking or who they are as a person or what they're capable of and it's got a lot of negative emotion and concern, the unconscious mind will kind of pack that away and repress it so it's not in your face all the time, but it won't ever critically analyse it, okay? It'll just get packed away. And so what happens then is as you grow into being an adult, there'll be elements of these memories with emotions and limiting beliefs that are still filtering your reality as an adult, Okay, but they were developed with the neurology of you as a little child and you're not consciously aware of it. You're not consciously aware of it. Now, I'll give you a really interesting example of this. When I was uh, little, uh, I grew up with my dad as a single dad for several years and uh, he was quite involved um, in a lot of ways. He had his own business, so you know he worked a lot. But he did. I remember he took us to uh, parent-teacher night at our school and uh, my brother's a little bit older than me and we went to this parent-teacher night and on the way home, I would have only been like, I don't know, four or five or something like that. I was quite young. And on the way home, um, it was getting dark and Dad thought it would be hilarious if he uh, chased us playing a game, right, like boogeyman in the dark type thing, going, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. Right? It freaked the crap out of me because I was very, I was a little girl and, um, you know, as soon as dad realised it was actually too scary for me, he stopped doing it, right? But it was very, very scary, okay? I was a little child, it was dark, my dad had a deep scary voice on, he was playing boogie monsters in the dark, right, chasing us down the road. It's supposed to be funny, I didn't find it funny, okay? So he stopped doing that but little did I know that that I'm going to get you imprinted in my little four, five-year-old mind and stayed there right up until I was in my 40s. 
And how this used to show up for me is quite incredible. And uh, how it used to show up for me is that, number one, people literally used to follow me. When I lived in a country town, there was like a town recluse, I think he had a drinking problem, who used to follow me around sometimes on his push bike. used to freak me out. Never spoke to me, never did anything to me, but he followed me around. Freaked me out. Um, then in my first job, I worked at the old domestic terminal at the airport. I was 15. There was a trolley man there who was uh, a little bit um, like mentally challenged in some way and he used to follow me around the airport and ask me out right used to completely freak me out my boss said it was hilarious this was back in the early 90s people weren't politically correct and looking after their staff like they should but it used to freak me out he never did anything to me but he just used to follow me around and freak me out then um i've had several other cases and it used to be you know if i got in my car at night i would have to check the back seats if i was at home alone i'd have to check all the rooms and the cupboards it used to freak me out that someone was going to be there that were going to get me um then when i was pregnant with my daughter when i was um 27 i had someone follow me through the shopping center like follow me through the shopping center like through a crowded shopping center like weaving following me through i had to like duck into the shop and they kind of walked past staring at me it was very freaky um, then again, when my daughter was younger, we were walking through Kmart. I had a, a, like a stalker dude follow me around Kmart, like peeking through racks at me and stuff. I had to go down a staff um, corridor and get staff out and they come out and he like legged it. They sent security after him and everything. Again, didn't do anything to me, but just freaked me out. Um, and it happened one or two more times in shopping centres where like someone would follow me and I'd have to get security, right? Like it was quite disturbing. And, uh, and so anyway, I just knew that I had this thing. And then um, through some kind of coaching conversation, after I learned NLP and timeline therapy, I suddenly had this memory pop up of my dad chasing me saying, S- I'm going to get you. And all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb went off. I went, oh my God, That's where this fear that someone's going to get me comes from. It's my four or five-year-old self freaking out that someone's going to get me when it was my dad, but it imprinted in my brain in a way that altered my reality right up until my 40s. I've told my dad this and he actually feels a little bit guilty about it, but it's not like anything terrible happened to me. But this is how these things work, right? I was able to do timeline therapy. I was able to release that. Never again have I been followed I don't ever have to check my car. I feel safe and secure in my house. Everything's fine. I don't feel like people are going to get me anymore. Okay, but that is just a really interesting example of how these things imprint and how it affects us. Okay, so with timeline therapy, you're able to access memories from your past without having to relive them or talk about them, essentially. You can do it from a dissociated perspective and dissociated means it's kind of like you're watching like from a far off distance your this memory and you watching it though with the neurology of you as an adult now or just you as your older self timeline therapy works with children as well and you're watching with the neurology and the understanding of your current self and you can then reframe the perspective that you held that event in when you were much younger okay because when you've got the ability to critically analyze and think differently you get very different perspectives you know that you survived you know that a lot of other different things you've got a lot of different understandings about the world you can do it from a different angle which means you're not in it when you're right in it you're associated and you can only see it from that perspective But when you do timeline therapy, you're outside of it. You can see it from all perspectives, which means you shift the meaning of that event. And when you shift the meaning of that event, you're essentially changing the past, okay? Because any event, anything that's ever happened to you, the main thing that's important about that is the meaning that you make, okay? It's the meaning that you make, any event in the past. There's plenty of things that have happened in the past that you won't even remember because you didn't make any significant meaning about them. But the ones that you do remember are the ones that you created a significant meaning about and either that was positive emotions, which is great, you keep those. If it's negative emotions, it means there's a perspective that you just need to shift. 
that you need to learn what else was possible. What else is the truth about this situation? Okay, that is actually, it's either positive or it's neutral. I can let that go. And that is a super, super powerful thing. And the fact is, the more timeline therapy that you do in being able to reframe the past and let go of emotions and limiting beliefs, the better ability you have to uh, uh, critically analyse situations that happen in your current time. So not only do you clean up the filters of the past that you look through the world at, but you, you, you train your mind how to think about the current situation from a multi-dimensional perspective, which gives you a much more grounded and whole perspective of life. It makes life so much easier. It makes you realise that not everything is about you, that, that you get to realise that you're the person in control of how you feel about anything at any given time. Right, your your body, your you in this vessel, is the only reality you get to experience. And the thing that most people don't understand is it's you who gets to choose what that experience is. Right, it's very, very, very powerful. So when we're releasing things like negative emotions, what we do is we look for what is the root cause, and there's a particular process through timeline therapy that takes you step by step through this to discover what is the root cause. Because when we look at um, memories, they're stored, the mechanics of memories and how they're stored is called a gestalt. And Fritz Perls in the, oh, I don't know, 1900s or something like that, um, you know, discovered this. But a gestalt is essentially a group of memories around a particular theme. So you'll have a group of memories that's called sang- uh, anger, group of memories called sadness, group of memories called love, happiness. You know, but you can have a group of memories around riding bikes. You know, you can have a group of memories around any kind of theme. But for negative emotions, what we want to do is find the very first event, which is the root cause of that gestalt. And when we reframe that and process that, then we can collapse that whole gestalt and let go of all the negative emotions on every event from that very first time all the way through to now. And it can happen in as little as 10 minutes, sometimes even less. It is super powerful. Now, this works due to concepts of quantum physics, and I'm not going to make this episode a a thing about quantum physics. (laughs) If you want to learn a lot about quantum physics and how we create our reality, uh, I recommend you come and do NLP Master Practitioner training with me because we go a lot into the holographic universe and uh, calculus Cartesian coordinates and quantum linguistics and a whole range of things of how we create reality and looking at reality from a multi-dimensional view. Uh, but this is how timeline therapy works. Okay, so essentially the timeline therapy works because the position in quantum physics, which is called the non-mirror image reverse, is it acts like antimatter. And so it dissolves your perspective on that past event. And it does it very effectively. And once you have done that, it's gone. It's changed for good. Okay, so you've effectively changed the past. You haven't changed any kind of physical event that happened in the past, but you are changing the meaning that you made about it. And the meaning is the only thing that really matters. Okay, when it comes to how you feel and your experience of life. And so timeline therapy is especially good for releasing negative emotions, like I said, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, shame, um, frustration, jealousy, resentment, any of those things. Uh, It's also very good for releasing phobias. I release phobias for people every single time I teach practitioner training and sometimes with my clients. I'm not necessarily advertising to release phobias, but sometimes people have phobias that I work with and I help them release them. So I've helped people release phobias of sharks, spiders, crocodiles. Um, One of my uh, students had a very interesting phobia that she couldn't touch her own navel. Like she couldn't touch her own navel, no one else could touch her. She couldn't look at anyone touching their navel. It was actually quite an issue. She got rid of it in like five minutes. Incredible. Um, Fears of heights, cats, dogs. There's so many 
fears and phobias that people have that they don't need to have. And you get you can get rid of them very, very fast using timeline therapy. Uh, anxiety. You can get rid of anxiety using t- timeline therapy. You can, use anxi- you can use the anxiety model and it very quickly teaches the mind how to think in a way that doesn't create anxiety. Of course, you get rid of the fear, then do anxiety model, you get rid of the anxiety. Uh, chronic pain is another thing that timeline therapy h- helps people to get rid of. Uh, a lot of people don't realise is that chronic pain, a lot of chronic pain um, is from repressed negative emotion, especially through the neck, back, shoulders, sciatica. Getting rid of limiting beliefs. So beliefs that people have are things like I'm not good enough or that people don't like me or I don't fit in or I can't make that kind of money or I don't belong or I'm no good at business. I had a, I had a limiting belief once that said you can't make money in business. Do you think that was a bit of a business blocker for me at the time? I was very glad to shift that one. Uh, interestingly enough, limiting beliefs stem from a decision. So at some point in time, something happened, someone said something, someone told you something and you made a decision about what that meant and you carry a belief from that time. So using timeline therapy, you can go back and again reframe that, get the learnings, get the wisdom and create a different decision, have a different belief. And it happens at the unconscious level and it's permanent. Once you release that old perspective, it doesn't come back because you've got the learning. You understand why that wasn't true. Why it's not true for you. Why it's not for true for the why it's not aligned with the truth of who you are as a magnificent empowered being. That's what you learn, right? It's very 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 powerful. You can also use timeline therapy for putting uh, engaging the unconscious mind to put goals in the, in your future in a way that makes those goals happen. It's, it's very much how I um I, I did so much in 2016, I learned NLP practitioner training, master practitioner training, trainer's training and delivered my first four certification of NLP, time therapy, hypnosis and NLP coach in less than 12 months. Started my own business. It was by using all these skills, timeline therapy, goal setting. It is very, very powerful. And like I said, now I use it with my clients all the time. I've helped people shift all kinds of trauma and limiting beliefs and old emotional stuff from their past. And the most important thing is you don't have to talk about what happened in the past. And that's why timeline therapy is now getting picked up so much more by psychologists and counsellors and all kinds of different practitioners because you can help people get results super fast without re-traumatising them by having to talk all through it again. And, um, and they shift amazing amounts of old stuff. I get people come to me who have seen psychologists in the past and they say, look, it was, you know, it's good, it kind of helped me, but the problem never went away until they did timeline therapy. Completely changed their life. So timeline therapy, I could talk about this all day and, in fact, you know, when I train, <laughs> I talk about it for quite a few days and uh, I'm super passionate about teaching it. I love teaching it. I love helping people with it. Um, I love hearing my students tell me about all the people they are helping with it, how it just blows people's mind. People go, I don't know how that worked, but it just worked. I just feel different now. Um, They go on, make more money in their business, start public speaking, you know, heal relationships, all kinds of things. It's super powerful. But my question for you is, what would your life be like for you if you didn't feel emotionally triggered by certain people or things, or thoughts, or events from your past. What would that be like? Maybe there's something that's happened to you in the past that whenever you think about it, it makes you mad, or it makes you sad, or guilty, or shame. What if you could just get rid of that? You can. What if you could actually move beyond something that happened to you that you thought was going to be a burden for the rest of your life? You can Now, as I said, you might not be able to change an actual physical event, but you can certainly change the meaning you made that created those negative feelings for you. 
you can 100% let go of those negative emotions. You can change the meaning of it. You can find the learning and the wisdom that hasn't been there for you when you know how to work with your mind and your unconscious mind. So the key to all of this is knowing that you, you only experience the world from within. Okay, You only experience the world from within. It's the only place you can experience the world. And that means you have the ultimate power to decide what that experience is going to be for you. People say forgiveness sets you free. Well, so does timeline therapy. It sets you free from the past hurts and limitations so you can create the future that you want to experience. 